Hello everyone and welcome to today's Photoshop tutorial. Today's tutorial is a surreal manipulation art piece. Um, it's similar but not quite the same as my McTomney uh, piece that I've recently uploaded to my channel. It was very popular, especially on my Instagram and it was popular on, on the channel, still, still is, uh, still doing quite well. Um, that should be popping up here. The link's in the description below for that one. Um, as it was quite popular, I thought I'd do another piece and today it's focusing on Frank Lampard and with him being the manager of Chelsea, a London club, used to play for West Ham, a uh, bit of a London boy, okay, I put an iconic uh, London landmark in the background as well, Tower Bridge. Again, this can be adapted to any uh, city or any player, so just keep the, keep the ground, change the player, and just change the iconic uh, landmark. So without further ado, I'm going to get straight into it. So I'm working on a Mac, so I'm going to press Command then. If you're working on Windows, you can use Control then. So width, I'm going with 1200 pixels. Height, I'm going with 1600. And I'm going to go with 300 pixels per inch. RGB color 8 bit, white background. And I'm going to click OK. So first image I'm going to drop in is Tower Bridge. Now with this image as well, rather than, I'm just going to resize it, rather than mess around uh, trying to change the sky and cutting little bits out, OK, I just image searched. Um, for Tower Bridge with a dark sky, I can't remember exactly what I searched for. So, try and uh, search for an image if you're not using this one, uh, your iconic landmark with a dark sky because it, it adds to the mood of the image. So, what I'm going to do is just going to right click and I'm going to flip it, do this the right way, yep, horizontal. And I'm just going to resize it. Kind of want something like that. Let's just check it. Yeah. Could bang on that. Happy with that. <laughs> okay. Um, lost my chain of thought. All right. So call that Tower Bridge. And I'm going to change the add in a curves adjustment layer. Where are you? Just there. I'm going to create into a clipping mask. Okay. It doesn't really matter. This slider. I'm just going to drop down slightly. And in the middle, drop down. I'm just going to pull that in slightly. I'm just going to change the tone of the image. Uh, next I'm going to do a vibrance adjustment layer and I'm going to drop that down to minus 25. So usually when I'm doing these images I just play around different adjustment layers, um, different settings and I just work out what I like and usually I create that into a clipping mask as well. Usually I, I kind of know what I'm going to go with before I start. Uh, and a colour balance as well. So kiss Frank's uh, Chelsea manager, Chelsea player. Okay, kind of want it to go with a bit of a blue theme. So, midtones. Make sure you got your midtones selected on your color balance. Balance the cyan's did minus five. The blues bumped up to minus six. Then I'm going to select the highlights, and again, all the lighter areas of the image. They're now going to just be given a little blue tinge. And it was just plus four for that one. And you can see the difference we've made. Just turned it, give it a little blue tinge. And make sure you can clip and mask that one as well. Uh, next then, I'm going to bring in the ground. And where are you? The landscape here. And I'm just going to raise it up a little bit. And hit enter there. Let me just check. It was a little bit smaller. So think about proportion as well with the player uh, that you're going to use. Now, I'd like to get rid of this bit. And usually, what I found, um, got your different methods, but the method that works for me is the pen tool. And gives a nice clean cut. Again, you don't have to be too specific at this point because the whole image is all going to blend in. If you're not too familiar with a pen tool, what I would recommend is loads of tutorials um, on YouTube. Fantastic resource. Go and, uh, go and check, check it out. I think uh, I've got a video, three things to learn first in Photoshop, and it mentions the pen tool. And there's a few uh, resources in that video, so if you want to check out that video, I would highly recommend it. And I'm just going to click off there. 
click around and connect that up. I'm going to obviously make sure you've got path selected. When you do this, you're going to make it into a selection, feather radius zero pixels. Okay, we've got our marching ants, command zero to come out of there. I like to command J or control J to make a new layer and then to get rid of the bottom layer and then you can just drag and drop that into the trash bin. And at this point as well, you can just get rid of that white background that we don't really no longer need. Uh, so I'm just going to line this up just so tower bridge I'm going to come back to that I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller use my V use my keys to knock it up a little bit command zero let's compare the ground it's there or thereabouts. I think the ground's a little bit smaller as well. Okay, so I'm just being uh, peculiar with that one. I'm going to bring it across a little bit. Right, so I can't because I've cut it. That will do. That is okay for me. Right, okay, so I'm going to uh, change the ground as well. So with the ground, we're going to add a color balance. So adjustment layer, and always forever losing them. And just the midtones on this one, and shadows as well. In fact, uh, same again. Going to give it a blue tinge, but going to be a little bit more extreme. The cyan's minus ten, and a plus nine, plus nine or a plus ten for the midtones, and then the shadows minus three. And plus six respectively and clipping mask as well just <laughs> only effects there and you can see that we're now starting to blend the two things together uh, select my ground layer I'm going to call that ground okay adjustment layer for that one as well is vibrance so I've selected that layer to automatically make it a clipping mask and with the vibrance I've dropped it down to minus 20, minus 19, minus 20, and then brightness and contrast layer of minus 40, and the contrast up to 30. And again, using that little eye there, we can see the difference we've made. So we're setting the tone of the image. And as well, we're going to do a curves adjustment layer. So I do like my adjustment layers, it do, does help. Clipping mask. And just coming down slightly, same as before, and bring the slider in there. So just playing around with it. So the input there, we've got 4 and 0, 128, 112 and 255, 229. Don't get too bogged down in that. Um, again, it's just to create a little bit of uh, shading and darkness. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create Tower Bridge into a smart object. So as you might know, this uh, basically means we can go back and edit it if we so wish, and we're gonna blur it out. So we're gonna filter blur, Gaussian blur, and give it a four pixel blur. It's looking fantastic. Select this color balance layer above tower bridge and select a new layer. So we've got a, now a layer behind the ground but in front of um, tower bridge. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I've got white selected over here on my palette. B for my brush tool. And I've got a blush, uh, smoke brush. Okay, links in the description below. Um, you have to sign up, it's from uh, Feelearn, another fantastic Photoshop. Uh, channel if you not check those out go check them out description link in the description below to download and how to use this brush it's very basic um, you have to sign up to their newsletter to get it um, it's highly worth it if not if you don't want to do that okay just pick a soft brush okay uh, pass it 50% flow I want around 15 and we'll see what this one looks like and drop the flow down to about 12, I'll pass it down to about 40. Okay, and I'm just going to paint across there. 
gonna come up slightly. So you, you see it's jittering and moving around. It's a fantastic brush. Okay, it's just enough, just so it kind of blending it in. Less is more. And I think that's looking good. And we're gonna call that smoke. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert this to a smart object as well. I'm gonna give this, give the smoke a blur, a blur, a blur. So you can choose it, in fact, choose it again here because it's the last thing we used. And I think four pixels is good for that as well. So we get rid of the smoke. You can see the smoke that we've added in here. Now it can change the color, just change it to red so we can see the definitive difference between Tower Bridge and the ground. Um, so we're good. So at this point then, all we need to do now is add a color lookup balance and then we can dodge and burn the ground uh, later on. So I'm going to add a color, dodge, blah, 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 blah. a color balance, a color lookup layer. So select color lookup, adjustment layer, and the one we're using is drop blues. There we go. And you can see the difference we've made. And yeah, not. Yeah, it's looking good. Um, blend mode keeping the same, opacity. What did I do with the opacity? It should be the same. Yeah, 100%. Didn't change any of it. Um, so we're looking good. So now we're going to bring in Frank Lampard. So we've pretty much done our background there, apart from the dodge and burn in the ground, which we'll do in a bit. So bring in Frank Lampard. Resize him. And if you're using this ground as well, just don't place him on the rocks. Okay, just think about where he would walk if he was here. It's, it's clipping in there. I think that looks okay. So just on this patch of grass here. And let's... Yeah, I'm going to make him a little bit bigger. I think that works well there. Okay, uh, we'll do some adjustment layers first. So adjustment layers, brightness and contrast. Uh, again, these just help him blend in. Uh, minus nine for brightness, minus, minus 10, minus nine, and six. So again, use the little eye. Make sure it's clipping mask as well, sorry. Okay, so we're just toning him down a little bit. Select the Frank Lampard again, and we're gonna add a vibrance. And we're gonna drop that vibrance down to minus eight. Again, if you're using different players, these um, settings are probably gonna be different, so just have a little play and a slide around. Um, now we're not going to, right, we're going to work on the shadows, but we're not going to take anything away. Usually on some of my tutorials, I like to tape away at the ground, but for this one, we're not going to. So I'm just going to press Command J, I'm going to duplicate him, or you can just drag and drop down here. Okay, this bottom one, I'm just going to rename Shadow. Okay, I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Hue, Saturation. Okay, it's easy to just do it right, this, just edit the uh, image straight away and drop that lightness down to a minus 100 and click OK. So now I'll take this level away. I've got a completely blacked out Frank Lampard. Command zero to resize. Press Command T, bring up my transform tool. And I'm gonna go with, I always get these wrong. Let's try perspective, not perspective, distort. There we go. I think something like that, press enter. Okay, I'm just going to move him up. I think he's looking good there. Let's just check our reference. Um, yeah, that's looking okay. In fact, I'm going to go back a sec. Let me just go back a few steps. Okay, bring Frank in, press Command T, come back. I'm going to go to the store. And yeah, that looks a bit better. 
I was a bit too uh, a bit too far over here. Didn't quite look right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blur in by twelve percent. So yeah. So I'm going to go to filter Gaussian blur. I'm going to slide that up to twelve. There we go. I'm going to change the opacity down. Sixty-eight percent. And let's just check. Yeah, it's looking good. Happy days. Okay, I'm now going to add some shading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. Okay, I'm going to hit B on my brush tool. I'm going to change it to a nice soft brush. Click off there. Make sure I've got black selected. And with our opacity, keep it at 40, keep the flow at 40 as well, using both at 40. Okay, I'm just going to flatten this slightly. And I'm just going to paint on ever so carefully. I'm just going to paint up his leg as well. A little bit too strong there. Paint underneath and paint up his leg. It's just that bit where it's touching. Where it probably be most dark. Again, a little bit too strong there. Just like that touch shadow, and I think that looks okay. So I'll call this one touch shadow. Again, I've got another tutorial on shadows, and um, should be I'll have it popping up here if you want to check that out afterwards. And um, just basically how I go about making my shadows um, in a little bit more detail. So on this one as well, select your vampire layer, new layer. So um, here, and we're going to call this one shading. There we go. Okay, hit the brush tool again. And now, because it's a clipping mask, we're painting it on Frank. I'm just blending it in. It's nice and dark. What you can do is bring that opacity up to about 60, 59. Paint it on there. I think that's looking good. I don't want to do too much there. And the bottom of his foot. And then drop the opacity right down. And you can paint up. I think that works quite well. So I'm happy with how this is looking. So again, it's a surreal piece, but it it's also, it looks like a surreal piece. You kind of want it, I don't know, I don't know if it's just me, you kind of want it to look like a surreal piece. You want it to look like an actual edit. So there we go. If it is a little bit too strong, you can just play around with the opacity. Uh, so we can drop it down to about 85%. And I think that's looking really good from where we were five minutes ago um, with the shading. So. Uh, that's good. So what we'll do now is we'll doge and burn Frank Lampard. So new layer, clip it so it's uh, working directly for on the Frank Lampard layer. Go to edit, fill, 50% grey in your uh, contents, drop down box, mode normal, pass it 100%, click OK. Then it'll pop up all nice and grey here. Go to overlay and we're set up to dodge and burn. What I like to do is burn first, so set icon here, uh, press C on your keyboard, mid-tones, yeah, mid-tones, exposure, 35, okay, and this is where you've really got to take your time. So again, we can just burn on his legs down here, and we can start to burn all the shading. So when I was doing this, and like my other tutorials, if you've watched them, can't recommend, you see the difference we're making already. I like to start from the bottom, work my way up. Burn that grass there, that's still there. I like to um, work my way up. Um, like I was saying on my previous tutorials, really take your time. Just for the purpose of this tutorial, I am speeding along. 
Okay, this really enhances your uh, image. I think this is, in my opinion, this is, kind of makes it and breaks it. So I'll speed it up. I'll do a, do a little bit. I'll speed it up and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so you can see the difference uh, that a quick uh, burn's made there. Okay, I've not gone uh, OTT. Keep clicking it on and off there. Okay, it really does uh, bring out your image and makes your characters or your your main focal point really pop. Um, again, take your time. Use your br uh, brackets on your keyboard um, to make your brush, your burn tool higher, bigger and slow, uh, lower. Um, and now we're going to go on to the Doge tool. So highlights, I've got the exposure around 10%, nothing too strong. Um, again, those bits where the lights are going to fall, that's kind of where you want to be focusing on. Careful not to outdo all the work you've done. And you want to spend a really, if you really want to make it good, okay, just uh, spend quite a while on it. Again, just for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm speeding through. Um, but again, you can see the difference we're making, especially on these these curves here. And around here. So I'm not going to dwell too much on it. I think you can, you can see already the difference it's making. Careful not to go over the shadows. Let it go back there. Um, you've already created on top of his hair as well. Two around his head and especially on his face. Okay, really take your time. Softens it out a little bit. And especially there. And there. Yeah, just quickly doing this. Okay, let's just see what we're looking like. So again, you can see the difference we've made um, straight away. It looks fantastic. So, done with that with Frank. What we can do is go to the ground layer. Okay, select this curves layer with the one below your color lookup layer. Same again, new layer. Clip it and edit. Fill, 50% gray, mode normal, pass it 100%. Okay. Blend mode, overlay, and it's going to be the same again. So, burn tool, 35%. Now, what I did is focused on just the low ground there. So, the bottom of the image is quite dark. And then, all the sides of the rocks. Again, I took my time on this one. Any dark parts are just burnt away. Try to avoid the top of the, um, so I'm not clicking there. Try to avoid the top, those bits there. In fact, done all that wrong. I think I'm on the burn tool. I'm on the burn tool, yeah. Thank God for that. <laughs> Thought I was on the doge tool then. Um, again, we haven't really got a light source as such on this uh, this image, unlike the McTomney one, which was coming from above. Um, but again, kind of just taking it that the light source is coming from behind because that's the where, where his shadow is there. So again, just burn the insides of the rocks. And you see the difference we've made there. And I'm going to go to the Doge tool, highlights, exposure. Okay, this is where... Just paint along the top of the rocks and on the tops. Like so. Um, again, just for the tutorial, I'm speeding along, but um, nice and bright up there. 
that's looking uh, a lot better from there. So the doge, do, uh, doge and burn uh, technique is re really, really good. Um, learned it a long time ago. Um, it's fantastic. So next, set the top layer, the doge and burn layer that was on Frank. I'm going to bring in our particles, snow particles. Appears a little bit slow. Just wanna, what's going on? There we go. I'm going to drop them down. I'm going to go to command T. I'm going to go to perspective. I'm doing this. I'm trying to always gets me. Go to distort. There we go. So I'm kind of going with something like that, so it's at an angle. Hit and uh, hit Command T again. I'm just going to grow them slightly so they're cut across. Place them around there. In fact, I'm going to make them a bit bigger. Place it there. Change the blend mode to screen. Where have you gone? There you go. And I'm going to go and add a levels adjustment layer. So rather than uh, brush away, what I'm going to do is make sure you've got it clipped as well. Play around with the sliders. And you can get rid of those lines. So those horrible lines we've got here, rather than... Uh, get a brush out and uh, mask away. What we simply can do is just play around with the sliders and I think looking quite good there. Use it to your heart's content. I'm gonna go with something around there. Yep, I like the look of that. It's looking quite good. If you want to uh, give them a blur to make them a little bit more blurry, you can do. Okay, next we're going to add a brightness and contrast layer. So what I'm doing now is just going to add a few finishing touches. So brightness and contrast of the brightness. I'm going to bump up to 100. Bear with me. It's not looking the best. Wait one second. Contrast to 40. I'm going to change the blend mode to soft light. Okay, what I'm going to do is this little box here. I'm going to fill it full of black, so press command backspace on my keyboard, fills it full of black, so it's a bit of a layer mask. Okay, I'm going to go to my gradient tool and make sure I've got uh, the white selected over here, so go into your basic brushes and just the uh, white and the nothing, the uh, transparent. And make sure you've got radial selected as well. I'm just going to drag and drop just like that. And I'm going to change the opacity down to 50%. So it'd be worth dropping that down before you go to your gradient tool. Just so you can appreciate the difference it's looking. And it's just adding a little bit of shading up in here. It's just making the image pop a little bit more. Again, completely up to you if you want to add that. Uh, okay, another colour lookup adjustment layer. So you can really see the images come along now in this short period of time. And we're going to go to teal orange. Where are you? There you go, teal orange plus contrast. I'm going to change the blend mode to colour at the bottom, just down there. And the opacity, I'm just going to drop down to 50. Yep, I'm liking the looks of this. Okay, next. Okay, I'm going to press Command Shift Alt and E. So the stamp visible uh, on a Windows, I assume it'd be Control Shift Alt and E. Okay, I'm just going to convert that to a smart object as well, just so we can go back and edit it. And it's time for camera raw filter time. Not too many adjustments on this. If you're using CS6, you might not have this. I think it was. I can't remember that far back. Uh, it can be downloaded as a plugin, as an add-on. Um, again, it's not the end of the world if you don't have it. So I'm going to ignore temperature and tint 
and I'm going to get the highlights and I'm going to drop them down to minus 50. The shadows, I'm going to bump up to 50. The clarity, I'm going to move up to plus 30. And I'm going to go to the uh, sharpening tool and I'm going to bump up the amount to 30 just to sharpen it up as I finish off. Click OK. And there you can see it pop. And there is our Frank Lampard Surreal Manipulation Art tutorial. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was good. I hope you learned a few things. Um, like I said in my previous one, my McTomney uh, video, these are the these are the sort of uh, designs that I like to make. And a lot of people in the comments as well, very popular on the McTomney one, were asking for more of this sort of style. Um, and I could only answer with a definitive yes, because I, I do love making these uh, sort of manipulations. Like I said before, you can keep the same ground, different uh, person, um, a player or a manager or whatever sport you're into, and then whichever city you're featuring, okay, just put an iconic landmark in the background. What I would recommend is uh, pick an iconic landmark with like a, a storm, clouds, just to uh, add to the mood, to the effect if you're going for this sort of style. Um, so yeah, no more uh, nattering on for me. Thanks for watching. If this is the first time you've seen my tutorial um, channel, okay, go check me out. If you liked it, consider liking and subscribing. If you're a regular, um, hope it was to the uh, high standard that you expect. And uh, I will see you in a tutorial very soon.